Hello and welcome. 13 years ago, I provided the first time a video about Scala energy transmission with pen pick coils, but did this with a magnifier and transmitter already 12 years ago. Nikola Tesla stated that more energy is received when energy is transmitted via the magnifier and transmitter. However, he never disclosed how it works. For our video today, I will work with commercially available pancake coils for the purpose that everybody can replicate it with the same equipment and component. I'm not affiliated with Dr. Mile or his company and I bought the pancake coils myself. But to reduce one point of error, I recommend it for the purpose of the replication. I will walk you through the process of the testing scenario by using a Q&A script I designed. This script defines testing parameters and mostly involves a flow diagram as it is used for software development. Because I want to keep your attention, I make it short. The following parameters of the test script applies. So here on the next slide, we go to the testing script part one. You see on the left side on top, you see the pancake coil, which is a pancake coil, which is commercially available. There you have the different uh, lead outs and you have different connectivities and load selectors defined. So we're going to have everything um, switched off from the load selector and we use our own resistor, which you find in the center. So this is a ohmite resistor, it's a precision resistor and has a um, precision of 1%, which we're going to test then on the top right side with my DMM is battery driven, so it has an um, accumulator, accumulator inside, which is shot up, so we are not connecting any ground or any, any kind of other power source to it. So we're going to measure, and that is the second part of the test. We are measuring via four wire leads. This is very important to remove the resistance of the wires. And I will give you a brief overview of what it means if you wish to measure only with two wires, what normal DMMs do, that you get a quite a large amount of error for your measurement. Then we're going to run the simulation for the 50 ohms as benchmark for calibration of for the oscilloscope voltage and the current probe. So the simulation will be done in LTSpice. We use 50 ohms, which is also one um, I have. So I have 50 ohms and I have 100 ohms and both will be tested um, on the DMM. Why the four wires that we see how accurate they are. So they should be um, within 1% and they're actually better. They go down to 0.5% in the um, precision. So the 50 ohms will be then connected um, to as a shunt to the signal generator and that allows us for the measurement of the accurate value. So we will have 5 volt peak to peak um, in the signal generator and we should then see this 5 volt peak to peak but we measure everything in RMS. So we're going to use then the 100 ohms and we um, connect it on the primary coil from the receiving side across it and we measure the power consumption across this load. We use this amplifier, the TC4420 CPA, which is a gate driver and here in my picture on first slide you saw that I used it already exactly in this configuration 14 years ago. This is the same driver, I use it for all of my um, amplifiers as a gate driver to drive my MOSFETs. Then we use also capacitors and we are using, very important here is the next asymmetrical component, we are using high voltage capacitors. Why? Because the dielectric is much larger, that means we have a, a bigger gap between the metal plates or the conductors on both sides in order to allow for a, high, a higher voltage to charge the energy of the capacitor. Then we tune to achieve the highest output on the receiver, the primary. So we're going to do that, is that, that that's called in the asymmetrical tuning. That is a scalar wave tuning. But I will also, and I haven't put it here, but I will also do then quick this symmetrical tuning. The symmetrical tuning is the way currently in the industry with all our systems, we are tuning um, our um, um, power systems and you will see that they behave exactly as the second law of thermodynamics would 
Za čest. So our first measurements after a warming period of 20 minutes for the DMM. So it's very important. It needs to settle down. Temperatures with the oscilloscope is exactly the same. They need to be warmed up first in order to measure accurately. We measure 49.919 ohm. That is a very, very good value. I would say it's 0.1% in the range we are looking for. Now I have connected the first 100 ohm resistor here. We measure 100.3 ohm. It's a precision of 0.3%. It's also within the 1% range. And I will now move over to this resistor. Needed to settle it down a little bit. So we are measuring on the second 100 ohm resistor between 99.3 and 99.6. It's also within the 1% range of precision. I'm very happy. So we can move over now to the simulation for our second test where we test all the oscilloscope and the probes. Here is our simulation for testing oscilloscopes and the probes. So we have 50 ohm across the output that should give us the uh, clear value of the peak to peak value for RMS, I have here all so the measurements put out. So if I run this circuit now, the simulation, so we have then here, I go right away into my log file, it's easier to see. So we are measuring for ampere 35.18, we are measuring for volt 1.75919, and we have a power consumption of 75.8 one milliwatt. So we'll put this information up on top for the measurement now of the oscilloscope and the oscilloscope probes and current probes. I have now distributed uh, the measurements so that we can see that. So we have on the um, left side the MSO 7014B. I have connected three of some very important. I, I use both current probes and I measure one voltage probe and I measure here, um, I measure for the voltage probe 1.73 volt and on the um, DSO 3014A I measure for the other voltage probe 1.743 volt. So a bit shy because we have resistance and, and we will not get the full value of it. So as you can see here we have both current probes show identical values. You see that also on the waveforms, they are both identical. We have a power factor of one. So we have 100% power delivery into the load of 50 ohm. And we measure 71 uh, milliwatts. This is also a little bit shy. I would have to increase the voltage to get the current up. But both currents probe are a little bit less showing that actually uh, it is based on the calculation, but it's a simulation and the simulation is assuming perfect values. We would have probably to add some DC resistance here for the wires we are using on the system and just to make sure we have 5 volt peak to peak and we're using the frequency as you can see here of 100 kilohertz. We're testing in sine wave. So we have here connected one probe and here I have connected all the other probe and here on this one there's nothing connected. So I move over now for the setup. We will use this one now on the left side for getting in and we will use this oscilloscope for getting out for the measurement of the power. So in the next test we make sure that our 100 ohm resistor is behaving the way it is. So we have it here. I have connected it across the output here on the power supply, never energize that now. It shows exactly the value we would expect for 100 ohm via 5 volt. It's 251 milliwatt. So this is also our benchmark. That means this is a power we probably not gonna provide because there will be a lot of wire and resistance, but we go to that in, uh, in details when I come now to the tuning of system. So the first tuning will be the synchronous, so it means the symmetrical tuning, the way we have power distributed 
in the world. So the first tuning will be that we have uh, it done in a symmetrical way, so we will have losses. We will not be able, with all both of them in symmetry connected, with all the wires and so on, will have the full 250 uh, milliwatt con uh, consumed by the load, but that's what we expect. But how much do we expect? We should expect at least that the load here, via the resistance, in a symmetrical way, will consume the same amount of as is delivered by the power supply energized now. And as you can see here, we have 2.485 volt on the left side, how we are delivering the power in, the square wave, and we have this, we have 2.4 volt delivered on the output side. So we are measuring 147 milliwatt and I deliver 158 milliwatt. So we have losses here. Yes, more power is delivered. However, in the symmetrical way, we will never ever achieve a COP greater one. Now, let me tune that now to the scalar wave. That means we have the asymmetrical view that we are shifting then the voltage curve, not necessarily the current, but the voltage curve over here. So we have asymmetrical two different coils. We have asymmetrical capacitance on both sides. And we are doing now the last asymmetrical part of it. You tuning into the scalar wave that we have here on the receiver side, a higher voltage and see how that pans out. So it shows me 411 milliwatt. I'm consuming 230 milliwatt, so the resistance is still there in the system. I am not able to deliver 250 milliwatt to the 100 um, ohm load. However, on the input side, I measure 158 milliwatt. It's also lower because we have a, a lower a voltage of 109 volt compared to 4.2 volt RMS on the output side. So now if I bring that up, so I will put the uh, calculation of the ratio on top uh, on the screen um, in the post editing process. So I'm going to add, go now to 300, so we have value of 230 to 406. Let's go further up. Let's go to 300 milliwatt power delivery. At 300 power delivery, I need to get a little bit down here. I consume on the input side 169 milliwatt. On the output side, I have 524. Next, we go to 400 milliwatt power consumption. Here. Yeah. So I have on input side 257 milliwatt. On the output side, you get down because we are reaching the limit. We have 680. Then we go to 500. So that should give you then the idea that we have, regardless of the power requirement, our ratio should stay the same. Let's fine tuning. But the tuning is not necessary, as we can see here. I receive, or let's say, I have a power consumption of 826 milliwatt on the output side. Coming in here is 316, and on the power supply, I'm consuming 500 milliwatt. So that should demonstrate that we have here an example where we can demonstrate there's an asymmetrical assignment of a system, coils, components, and so on, frequency, that we are able to have a higher gain. This is a way, natural way, nature is working. It works in abundance. It gives us more than we have available. However, our system, the way we, everything is built in our society, is symmetrically built, and it doesn't make any sense, because in a symmetrical uh, way of uh, uh, arrangement, there will never ever be a COP over one.
So I will go over now it to uh, other tests I will do. I will revisit all the tests where I did symmetrical um, assignment, where I was expecting to achieve more or much more, and see how that pans out. If you have any questions, reach out to me. There will be more details for my members on my website. Thank you.